Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Astonbert. In the spirit of things now being online, it seemed only right that we welcomed in the official summer holiday with a virtual speech day. So a very warm welcome to you all, staff, parents, Boris, Donald, and most importantly, students. My thanks to Reverend Alice and the hugely supportive outgoing head girls and their team in study one. Kira and Isabel have represented the school in many situations this year. I've extended a warm welcome to our new head girls, Isabel and Jasmine, who also recognise we have some way to go in order we can bring our community back together again after the summer. Leadership will be more challenging for them and the incoming study one. And of course, our year 11 prefect team. But they are all keen to rise to the responsibility and I'm confident that they will deliver on their promises to be there for the rest of the school throughout the year. I would also like to recognise many of our friends from the association, our body of ex-students who may well be listening today and to wish them a very happy 90th birthday. The first students to have completed two years of sixth form education under the fairly awesome leadership of Mrs. Hewison Crawford graduated from Westonburg 90 years ago. The association has supported the school since that day and I'm grateful for their friendship and encouragement as indeed are a number of our students who benefit from the memorial bursary on an annual basis. It is thanks to one of these wonderful members that the works on the lake have been underway this term and while she prefers to remain anonymous I would like to publicly acknowledge our gratitude in this auspicious of years for the financial support for the restoration of the lake. Carefully managed over these last two 12 weeks while we have been busy in our virtual world. One of these silver linings has been a site which has enabled works to be done to it. The results are fantastic. And just last week, a borehole by the golf course was carefully drilled. 100 metres below the car park, where we're now able to, to access an aquifer from which we can draw to fill the lake. Last fall, seven years ago, this is a much awaited excitement, and I promise to bring pictures as this happens. It will be a privilege to formally reopen the lake as school returns in September. The works underway, a testament to a careful programme managed by our heritage trustees, the Holfords of Western Butt Trust, fondly referred to as Hout. The Holfords owned Western from 1665, living in three separate houses, the final version completed in 1878. Not having the, full, the school full this term has allowed me some time to appreciate the vision, engineering and architectural excellence that Holford applied to this final build one which Robert Holford's son continued after his father passed away. Both George and Robert displayed a precision and a thought process which put excellence as an expectation and the care they took in their decision making was inspiring. I hope as we have tracked through this final term you have found that we have also tried to think carefully through the decisions we have made to best suit all of our families and I thank you for your patience in support of these judgments. I also hope that as our students pass through with an element of custodianship in their mastery, that this excellence and history of a traditional and exceptional build seeps through their soul, leaving them with an undeniably privileged exposure, not only in the venue of their education, but in the architecture which surrounds them. As we have time to reflect on lockdown, there's no doubt that we have all had time to think about what our next steps might be, or indeed, if perhaps we can go over and think about some of them. What demonstra it's demonstrated to me is that our capacity to cope in adversity, to meet the challenge of change head on, and to unite at a time when much of the world seems so certain on pulling itself apart, must bring some hope to our students. You are the generation and the personalities who can affect a shift from this experience. To use the environmental benefits we have observed 
over the last few months to slow the carbon footprint we seem so intent on digging. To prove that acceptance and compromise outweigh judgment and impatience. And to truly demonstrate that an action of kindness can make an extraordinary difference if just a few people can get behind it. For some of us, there has been a sadness. And as a school community, we share your sorrow and please know we are here for you. One of the significant losses in our virtual schooling has been that physical contact so carefully shared in a school environment. From the lending of a pen to the warm embrace of celebration, a hug of support, keenness to be involved in a lesson or a careful hand on the shoulder to reassure that someone has your back. Touch has a significant power to it and should never be underestimated, even in an environment where it is limited. For others, new adventures and challenges have been dreamt up. Baking seems to have taken a new focus for families this lockdown. Sharing in the preparation and creation, challenges set in our recent Shine Week brought some amazing results. And I was really pleased to see the children rise to the service task. The first term this year got off to a busy start with our additional layer of boys in year seven. They established themselves sensibly and once the PE department became used to the rugby pitch invading the cross space, they never really looked back. With resounding successes in their matches and around the school, the first representative rugby team set a high bar for them to work to and were perhaps the most successful team in school. Moving into co-education has been a positive step for Westonbert and I am grateful to all of those, but especially the pioneers for this, for making this first year a success. As we return in September, we will do so with the strongest numbers yet and a fully co-educational key stage three, which will nearly total the sum of the school five years ago. While this is a celebration in itself, we are also proud to be moving forward with plans for site regeneration and renovation. And we shall look forward to continuing this work alongside the architect team in September. Other sports have continued at pace and while rain stopped play at the Nationals for lacrosse, it did not dampen the passion and enthusiasm, which we also see in our other representative sports. Netball, swimming, hockey for the boys, and notably, and sometimes a little more quietly, our equestrian team. As our only sponsored team, they have had a range of successes this year, and my thanks must go to Mrs White and Joe Baker for the dedication to the management of this group. And of course, to Jo Hansford for her onward sponsorship. We are quite the envy of others. Sport is of course, not only about the activity, but also about the character and the teamwork development within it. Dance has really started to take hold in performing arts. And I'm thrilled we have two of our year 13 BTEC students graduating with honor after a committed two years. They leave behind a real passion, and I hope we will begin to see this important art form not only grow in popularity, but very much become part of our drama department too. Blending brilliantly as ever with the music department, we were treated as our ever famous tree was put in place to a stellar performance of a Christmas carol in the Great Hall. With good voice, and another cast well choreographed in movement, song and performance, we sold out of seats and readied ourselves for the festive season to come. This culminated in the school's first foray off site for our carol service to mark the end of term and St Mary's Tetbury was a perfect venue to do this, ensuring the growing congregation had the space to sit for a moving service and sublime singing from our chamber choir. The junior Aladdin performance lifted us all above the clouds as we soared on a magical carpet ride of music, song and dance. The collaboration and final outcome was a feast of colour, enchanting even the hardest Jafar heart. The music department have been working with the younger years, carefully to ensure the development of some of our younger musicians, ready to come through and support a variety of ensembles planned for this coming year. 
the Festival of Music, which is usually picnic in the park, sadly lost to the pandemic this year, will likely, subject to guidance, be made up for in some form as we return again in September. I know plans are already afoot for events with or without a live audience. Normally, at this time, I would be urging you to visit the art department to see the end of year exhibitions. I'm sad we cannot do this, but I hope the online version released as a little montage gives you some sense of the talented artists and designers we have beginning to take shape or readying to use their talents elsewhere. With textiles, photography, fine art and product design, the opportunity for creativity is vast and is certainly being expressed in a range of additional activities around the department. A year seven competition with Bristol University Computing Department proved our out of the box and our creative thinking was perfect for a winning entry. A trip to the Ashmolean has prompted a recreated canopic jar in lockdown. Westminster prepared itself for a visit from a group and not only treated to a tour of the seats of power, but an interview with our local MP. I'm fairly sure the most recent breakfast and politics session with a range of political entities was more amusing and required less travel. But nevertheless, this trip to London inspired. The Duke of Edinburgh Award has the highest number of entries in school this year, and we're proud to report a successful gold completion for the group and silver and bronze groups in progress. Luckily, we were able to practice our Spanish on the Madrid trip. And if the Prado Museum was not enough, visiting the home of Cervantes must have given some motivation to tackle the epic of Don Quixote over lockdown. Our service project to India was not only a success in its undertaking, but the additional fundraising was a huge accomplishment, ensuring that the orphanage we sponsor was given a significant boost and our visiting students an experience of a lifetime. The skiing may well have been our first meeting with coronavirus, yet to be validated, but fortunately the snow made up for their trip. We hosted a wonderful, if slightly mischievous group from Thailand with whom we now have a firm exchange programme set with. I hope we're able to send our year eights to visit them next Easter, as our year nines have an opportunity to further develop our relationship through exchange with Lancaster Country Day School and the years 10s consider an exchange in Japan. While of course the world is locked down, we are hopeful of a safe reopening time and knowing each other culturally can only keep metaphorical walls down and unite a generation to work and be supportive mutually. The year nines have had two external competitions to be involved with, Fame Lab with the Cheltenham Festival as initiated by the science department brought great excitement as they work through the process internally to finally present against other schools. This year, taking an individual winning title or two. The G First GCHQ Challenge Day was a perfect chance to hone analysis skills. And as they start focusing on GCSE work, at least allowed some learning to be squeezed in away from the regular curriculum. Year eight, have really stepped up. And as they increase in size again next year, I'm confident they have a good group ready to support each other as the new with the new students incoming. Preparing the leavers for the great escape this year has been problematic, not least in not seeing them for this last term. They lost the opportunity to shine and define their own hard work towards their exams. And more than ever, they're going to have to be prepared to be able to justify themselves, to be confident, in who they are. In some ways, this has been self-created with the addition of an online presence in social media. They well know the dangers of this. But it seems the world is far more critical of its subjects than ever before. And so knowing yourself, accepting yourself, and being prepared to support others is going to be key. While we lost an opportunity to work with our examination students this term, we were presented with the chance to extend some of them with preparation work for university, onward sick form courses, depth learning in areas of choice or for the EPQ. Out of diversity, we can find glimmers of optimism and certainly the staff have thoroughly enjoyed the time to talk with our students, 
in undergraduate conversations, not necessarily allocated for our curriculum. The students themselves have adjusted well, and it's always been my observation that children are hugely conservative, never keen for change to be imposed, and yet they are innately adaptable. The year 13s and year 11s have had to cope with an enormous disappointment. For most, I can't talk for all, in not being able to prove themselves that they have deserved a certain grade, extraordinary times. But what they must take with full pride in their achievements are the credit for the grades when eventually delivered in August. While the exams may not have been sat, the work behind the scenes has. And as I sat with the senior team to challenge and evidence these grades submitted, I was enormously proud of the set of marks finally sent to the exam boards, which were testament to the hard work undertaken by each of the girls. Quite what September looks like, I'm unsure. But please be reassured, as long as we have the go ahead, or at least the nod to say, we can make some of our own decisions. We will do all we can to ensure the safe return of these students to school with as much normality as we can manage. Lockdown learning has been impressive. And to parents who have supported your children, thank you and congratulations on the end of your probation. This year in losing out on speech day, we will miss the chance to say fond farewells to our international short stays. And while this will save on the tears, it doesn't bring justice to the enthusiasm and the energy they bring. Mexico, Spain and Germany, thank you for your time. We will miss you. Friendships have been forged and I know these will continue as you invest time in maintaining them. To our international parents, thank you for trusting us with more than the education of your children. They have been a credit to you and they will be missed. We have an incredible group of year 13 this year. They will be forever remembered for challenging the year, year seven to football matches at lunchtime in the rear gardens. And while ground staff rather wrung their hands in some sense of lawn despair, the spirit with which the games have been played out not only set children up for a positive, if slightly sweaty afternoon of lessons, but it was observed as a wholly collaborative, supportive and year transcending game of mob football, played with enthusiasm, respect, and healthy competitiveness. Everything I would expect if being led by this year group. Throughout last term, I think more than ever, we've had to consider what balance means. And if we can take a moment before the declaration of term end is finally decreed, I would urge us all to think on this. It is of course, vitally important to have an opinion. Breakfast and politics, Socratic society, history of art, your lessons all go some way to supporting the development of your opinion and the creation of your viewpoints. Spending time together, sitting around the supper tables or just chatting as we undertake different activities on site, again, all supports our idea development. But it can be so easy to take a fixed and unchanging view or lean so far to one side that having the empathy to see the other makes negotiation compromise, but importantly, acceptance impossible. None of us should ever consider our position firm. And as the world turns as quickly as it is at the moment, we must all reflect how we best fit in it. Rumi wrote, out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and right doing, there is a field. I'll meet you there. Class of 2020, this is an incredible school community. This year has finished in a manner none of us expected. But if I can urge anything of you over this summer, or indeed, as you make the break for that well-earned freedom, find your field. Establish it so that right and wrong finds a boundary. Fill your space between with plants and trees which nourish you through knowledge, love, passion and experience. Let your roots take hold and ensure they reach the furthest corners, but never stop seeking ways to grow and blossom. 
for this year 13 is your time. Thank you. As you'll know, it's customary for me at this point of the year to introduce a speaker to inspire, taking us through into the summer holidays. With the world in lockdown, there's been so many choices to think about. Boris Johnson has made some, Donald Trump, plenty to say for themselves. But then of course I realised in our midst we have a man of many leadership faces. And so I wondered what our year 13 parent, Rory Bremner, could deliver for us. Hi, 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 hi. I, I, I can't promise. I cannot promise uh, to, uh, to deliver on that score. But may I first salute you, uh, Natasha, for your indefatigability, your, your fortitude. I, I, I think the, the, the motto at Western Bird is, is uh, bono uh, malum superate, that uh, we shall overcome evil with good. And I, and I think that is, that is what you do. You've overcome the evil of Corona. Uh, with the good of what you what it, what you have done uh, in these last few months, so so Natasha, I I I, I salute you, and I, I speak as a parent, I say, and indeed I am a father of uh, of. Hang on, um, anyway, uh, if if you've been a a, par a father uh, as long as I have, and indeed as often uh, as I have, I have a personal uh, reprodu a personal reproduction number R uh, of I think it's six or is it seven? I don't know. We have not yet. Uh, completed our track and trace program for the the uh, the people with whom I have come into contact. But nevertheless, if you've been a father as, as, as often as I have, uh, you are aware of the need to go the extra mile, to go the extra mile, or indeed in the case of Dominic Cummings, to go the extra 30 miles uh, to check uh, your eyesight. But I, I think you have certainly, uh, all of you um, at Western, but you have definitely gone the extra mile uh, for your for your pupils. And I, and I, and I thank you for that. Thank you, Boris. And I wonder if the American president has anything more positive he'd like to add. Natasha, uh, I like to surround myself with very positive people, positive people. My, my valet, he tested positive. The other day, my daughter's uh, PA, she's positive. And the vice president's press secretary, they're all tested positive. So very positive people. But I, I want to say a very special hello to everyone at Weston Burton because uh, you don't know this, but I, I was a great friend of Richard Halford, who, of course, he was the first man to live at Westenburg, 1665. He showed me around the house, his, his daughter, Sarah, no, his, his, his wife, his wife, Sarah, uh, brought him to the house, said it's a wonderful, beautiful place, Westenburg. And he showed me around, we looked at the lake, and it was very beautiful. And I went back, I remember a couple of hundred years later, with his great-great-grandson, Robert, Robert Stainer Halford, wonderful family, the Halfords. And of course, now they just do car parts. I think a lot of parts for auto, automobiles, Halfords. And, but Robert Stainer, who built the house, uh, and I, he showed me the original. I said, you need to tear it down. You need to tear it down and build something a little bit more modest. And that's where you are today. You can see the room behind you, very minimalist, very, very easy to maintain. Very, And that, that was what we did in the 18... 30s, 1840s. And then I came back in 1925, 1928. I came back in 1928. I was one of the first girls to go to Westenburg after the, after the martyrs, the martyrs uh, opened it up. And I was one of the first girls. And I think we're all so proud of what it's become. And I know you're now co-educational. And uh, I, I, I think what you've done with that place is wonderful. So I salute you again. And I say a very, very special uh, congratulations to all the people who are graduating this year from Western Bird. Thank you, Mr. President. But Rory, on a slightly more serious note, I wondered as a year 13 parent who's faced the challenges of the past academic year with us, has anything more that you could add? In every challenge there, there are opportunities, you know, to the children out there, the fact that you've learned to, to adapt, but also it's a new world, I think, that they're coming into as well, because, again, our generation as parents, you know, it was a world very much after the, after the Second World War, it's a world of alliances and things like NATO and the United Nations, the European Union, and all of these things these coming together. And what we've seen more recently has been a world kind of pulling apart. And in a way, the people leaving Western Bert, the girls leaving Western Bert now, they're the generation that's going to have to find a new way to bring people together. Our generation, we, we're the ones who, who we, we, we burnt all the carbon and we spent all the money. 
and your generation children watching now and people who are leaving now um, it's a big challenge to create a new world and not only a new world but a new normal after the corona a new world where climate change is is being addressed where things like black lives matter as well and all these issues where we're very polarized now and whether it's america and democrats and republicans whether it's here with brexiteers and remainers it's there's so many divisions now and the divisions get very very um, entrenched and very passionate and often very angry and, I, and it's it's so important to have these big discussions and these big debates but in a way where people are, are working together and trying to understand another point of view and I remember my headmaster um, well actually <laughs> well my uh, the, head, the guy who became headmaster I was at Wellington Anthony Selden and he said there were two sorts of pupils leaving Wellington there were the ones who said they'd had the happiest times of their life at school and those who couldn't wish to leave <laughs> and he said his job was to make sure that both uh that, that they had they held both thoughts at the same time that they they'd had a wonderful time but they were ready to leave and you quoted yourself margaret mason in that uh, lovely speech that you gave which is still online about the holfords um and it, she said that very very many from the school look back uh on the school with great affection with gratitude for mental stimulus and growth the first stirrings of creativity, for friendships made and laughter shared, for the deep healing peace of the surrounding park and the strong shelter of the house, which somehow, however illogically, they feel is particularly theirs. And I thought it was a lovely summing up, really. I hope they had that deep healing peace and, uh, and felt that it was a very special place, a very lucky to be at Westonburg, those who leave and they've, they've had an amazing term. You've got these beautiful gardens. I remember John Fortune saying to me, um, talking about uh, a relative of, of mine and uh, I was saying, so, so what's, what's the best, what are, what are the best ways to look after children? And he said a gardener um, that he knew when he lived in a castle, he rented a castle in Ireland and he said he, he didn't know how to cope with the garden. And the gardener said, well, what this garden needs most of all, Mr. Fortune, is neglect let it grow let it grow naturally and i suppose uh you have trained and taught uh the girls but there is also that time to say well let them grow in their own way so um so go forth and grow and for those of you back next term as and when that happens um good luck thank you boris donald and maury i'll now hand over to our academic staff to announce this year's prize winners and the award for sustained high effort in year seven goes to Rowan Parfit. And the award for most improved effort in year seven goes to Daisy McMinn. The award for the year eight sustained high effort goes to Erin Brady and Chloe Pohl. The award for the year eight most improved effort goes to Libby Bicknell. The award for the year nine sustained high effort goes to Sophia Trolley. The award for the year nine most improved effort goes to Pia Rodriguez. The award for most sustained effort throughout year 10 goes to Charlotte Hill. The award for most improved effort in year 10 goes to Mavis Wong. The award for sustained effort throughout year 11 goes to Eowyn Huntley. The award for most improved effort in year 11 goes to Hannah Jacobs. The year 12 sustained high effort award goes to Hannah Wiley. The Year 12 Most Improved Effort Award goes to Francesca Watson. The Year 13 Sustained High Effort Award goes to Isabella Weatherall. The Year 13 Most Improved Award goes to Cathy Tang. The Wishford Award for the Best A-Level Results 2019 is jointly awarded to Natia Jikia and Katie Battershaw. The Wishford Award for GCSEs in 2019 goes to Caroline Yu. It gives me great pleasure to announce 
that the Leslie Kent Shield for choral music has been awarded to Caitlin McAllister for her outstanding commitment and drive within chamber choir and her enthusiastic leadership skills as head of music in study one. Well done, Caitlin. It gives me great pleasure to award the Stubbs Music Cup to Erwin Huntley for her outstanding commitment and contribution to the music department. Well done, Eowyn. The Naylor Music Prize is awarded to Vicky Clark and Emily Chubb. I am very, very excited to announce that the Magic of Music Award goes to Tallulah Cahoon in Year 9. Well done, Tallulah. The award for the Photography Prize goes to Amelia James. The Art Prize for Endeavour is awarded to Charlotte Vickery for her dedication to the subject. The Holder Art Award for Achievement goes to Izzy Hillier for excellence in her artwork and commitment to the subject. Well done, Izzy. The History of Art Prize goes to this year's winner for a persistent attendance over the course of two years uh, and for excellent and thoughtful contributions throughout. And that winner is Hannah Wiley. Well done, Hannah. The Holder Textiles Progress Prize goes to Pippa Clark. The award for psychology goes to Millie Dehan. The Rufus Isaacs Prize goes to Natasha Abosimons. Well done, Natasha, for your great achievement. I'm very proud of you. Y desde el fondo de mi corazón, te voy a echar mucho de menos. Adiós, Natasha, y mucha buena suerte. The Mary Henderson Travel Award and Cup go to Miriam Lucas. The Modern Languages Prize Junior goes to Hélène Rottier. The Jubilee Cup, also known as the Junior Mathematics Progress Prize, is awarded to Francesca Dumaro. The Maths Prize is awarded to Anya Petrich. The Junior Science Prize is awarded to Chloe Johnson. The Physics Prize is awarded to Cathy Tang. The Chemistry Prize is awarded to Victoria Clark. The Sheila Wood Biology Prize for 2020 goes to Anya Petrich. And the prize for computer science goes to Tamara Omani. The Alfredo Davis History Prize goes to Hattie McCormick. And I'm delighted that the winner of the Food and Nutrition Prize is Charlotte Ratcliffe. And the award for the Copland Drama Cup goes to Millie Dehan. And the Business Award goes to Tanisha. The award for the Religion and Philosophy Prize goes to Sarah Lee and Amy Lewis. Hi everyone, I am very happy to present the Junior Burgess Sports Awards Prize. And this goes to, drum roll please, Karis Johnson, well done. This prize goes to an outstanding athlete who has excelled throughout her time at Western Burt in the sports field. And the senior Burgess Sports Prize goes to Isabel Edwards. Great pleasure today in giving out and presenting a brand new award called the Dance Development Award. This is for outstanding commitment to dance, participation, teaching, choreography across the schools. This prestigious award goes to Alice Foley. Well done, Alice. This year, the Sophia Ash Award for the most accomplished equestrian goes to Maddie Perry. The St. Catherine's Prize for excellence and strength of spirit is awarded to Caitlin McAllister. The Susan Cole Cup for Service goes to Sophie Barter for her outstanding efforts in fundraising for India. The Paula Formby Cup for all-round participation this year goes to Isabel Viola. The 
Janet Archer Prize for Service Above Self is awarded to Kira Waite. On behalf of the Learning Support Department, I am proud to award the Anne Sharp Cup for Endeavour to Audrey Mark. Well done. The Association Prize is awarded to Eloise Stokes. This student is a pupil who experiences life in its full, multifaceted, multi-sensory way. But she meets these challenges with vibrancy, energy and passion to succeed. I am therefore delighted to award, on behalf of my department and the wider Western Burke community, the Sasha Rainey Brown Cup for Triumph Over Adversity to Ava Bremner. Congratulations, Ava. The Geography Department are delighted that the Sheila Urquhart Cup for Achievement in Geography is awarded to Charlotte Rushton. The award for Junior Geography Prize goes to Beatrice Richardson. And this year's 2020 Spencer Latin Prize goes to Eowyn Huntley. Well done, Eowyn. Really good work. Congratulations. The Media Prize goes to Marina Jacobs. The Mary Lewis English Cup goes to Sophie Billingham. The Friends of English Western Burt Senior Prize goes to Emma Hillier. The Friends of Western Burt Junior English Prize goes to Emily Bray. And this year, the winner of the Leeds Top Student Prize is Nell Sansom. And in a slightly more complex manoeuvre, to announce the winner of the Cup of Cups, I pronounce the house with the most points and the new academic house first time winner to be Beach. Congratulations everybody in Beach for a wonderful, wonderful summer and we look forward to seeing you all in September. Bye bye.